Welcome to part 5 of a series of videos describing how to perform chip seek analysis using Galaxy. In this part I'm going to talk about how to make the results from MAX2 peak calling more informative. MAX2 tells us where our protein of interest is binding to the genome, but nothing else. To make the results more biologically relevant, it is of interest to know of what other genomic features are present in the vicinity of each binding region. The most common feature that people want to know about are genes. A binding region in close vicinity to a gene is indicative, but not evidence for, regulation that the gene, uh, that that gene is regulated by the protein of interest. I'm going to present two pieces of software that uh, our group have converted into Galaxy Tools CEASBW and RNA Chip Integrator. More on those in a moment. But before we can get going, there is one small problem. The format of the results files from Max2 are not directly compatible with the new tools, but fear not. Within Galaxy, I will show you how to extract the data we need in just a few steps. Before we uh, start rearranging file formats, it is useful to filter binding regions and consider those that we believe to be good or real binding regions. This is primarily determined by the Q value. However, there is usually a subset of regions with high Q values but low fold enrichment, which I tend to think of as about less than 5. It's kind of arbitrary, but has worked well for me in the past. So if you were to look at these regions on a genome browser, you would see that there is a huge enrichment of chip fragments, but also a large genomic background. So within Galaxy, we can use one of the inbuilt tools to filter the uh, detailed max results, which in this list is into peaks interval. So let's just quickly look at that again. Uh, this contained all the uh, information headers for the results, and then you've got um, a candidate binding region per line, and across we have different fields giving us information about where the binding region is and some associated statistics. <clears throat> so in this case we're interested in the fold enrichment value that shows us just how enriched the uh, chip uh, fragments are above the uh, calculated background model for the genome. So as I said there's a, a tool in Galaxy called Filter and again we can use the search tools functionality to find this easily. Go and we can use it's under the filter and sort section, and it is filter data on any column using simple expressions. So let's just click on that one. Now we want to be using number 26, the peaks interval file here. I select that from the drop down menu. You can uh, type the number if you know it, which so 26. Click on that. Now the expression here is uh, we choose a column and then some sort of condition uh, which extracts the uh, lines containing the information we want. So um, the fold enrichment column was number 8 and we're interested in any binding regions with a fold enrichment of 
less uh, sorry greater than or equal to 10 um, I mentioned 5 being a kind of arbitrary minimum uh, if you want uh, a set of quite good fold enrichment regions then you can use 10 as a, a value so we just type um, instead of equals equals is greater than or equal to 10. Let's go that other way. So that's fine. We don't have to skip any head header lines because Galaxy already knows there are header lines because there are hash symbols in front of the header lines. So you just click execute. Oops, I didn't actually want to do that because I've already done it for you. I'll just delete that. Um, so the output here, when I ran this before, was this one here. Uh, incidentally, if you want to see how a particular history item was run in the past, uh, you can open it and this sort of recycle uh, arrows here, if you click on that, that will show exactly how the tool was run in, in the past so here we are number 26 C8 is greater than or equal to 10 no header line skipped so if we look at that we've got all of the lines that were in the um, the peaks interval file but now what's happened is all the uh, header lines have been stripped out we just have the lines where that C8 is greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so for the two um, tools I was talking about, CEASBW and RNA Chip Integrator, the only information we need is the, well, is a set of coordinates, which is chromosome start and end. Now, in the um, max output you get chromosome star end in the first three columns but this relates to the entire region now um, myself I consider the area around the summit region to be of most interest because that's where uh, most of the fragments pile up so it's likely to be more likely where uh, binding is occurring at least for transcription factors which bind to the DNA so column 5 gives the uh, coordinate for the uh, the coordinate within the binding region where most of the fragments line up the summit so what we're going to do now is extract some information to create what I call a set of summit regions of 200 base pairs centered on the summit. That's a bit waffly but hopefully it will be, be, become clear as I go through the steps. So I'm now going to use another one of Galaxy's inbuilt in tools called Compute search bar and this is under text manipulation compute and expression on every row so I'll click on that now what this allows us to do is to take the for each line this will work it takes the summit position on column 5 of our new filter data set and we want 100 base pairs either side of that coordinate I, I, as I said I like to use 200 base pairs centered upon the summit so the first thing we need to do is we want to say uh, take the information in column 5 and subtract 100 the uh, file that we're going to 
use is um, our filtered set which is number 30 here now this is important this round result um, setting because if you don't round the result you'll get your coordinate number and then point zero because it thinks it's uh, dealing with a floating point number so if you just want an integer with no point zero on the end which will muck everything up we have to set that to yes round the result so you'd press execute and that w the result would appear as number 31 again we can just have a sanity check here and check if that's how I actually ran it and indeed that's the case so let's just have a look at the output that appears as uh, number 31 so what happens we've got all the lines and fields from the previous file in number 30 but we've now got a new number for each one and this is the summit region minus 100 or oops, C5 minus column 5 minus 100 so then what we need to do to get our second coordinate is the same again and we'd go to compute this time we want instead of using the previous filtered file we want to use our new file which has that coordinate minus 100 in so number 31 round yes and it's again it's C5 but this time it's plus 100 so if we run that we would get number 32 let's just look at that and indeed we've now got two coordinates on the end which are 200 bases apart that's um, Da 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 666 and da 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 866, so 200 bases, and this is centered upon C5. Now, although Galaxy can be instructed to use uh, certain columns of a large file uh, to indicate where the chromosome start and end coordinates are, all the extra columns can sometimes cause. Um, different tools to fail so I'll just show you what I mean um, so this was our this is our final file after doing compute if we click on the pencil icon which is edit attributes you can see down the bottom here it's saying that the file um, has information for chrome zone in column 1 start position in column 2 and column in uh, column 3 now we could say uh, alright uh, let's, let's just look at this we could say now alright we're interested in column 1 as the chrome zone, column 11 as the start and column 12 as the end however I know that if we did that CEAS and uh, RNA chip integrator would fail so what we need to do is extract column 1, column 11 and column 12 into a new file now Galaxy allows us to do this again using a little inbuilt, inbuilt tool called cut and cut again exists in text manipulation subsection there's lots of different useful tools in here like selecting first last lines etc so click on cut we want 
so column one uh, column what did I say column 11 and column 12 uh, most things in bioinformatics use a delimited by a tab and this is coming from uh, file number 32 and then you just hit execute and then the output appears here as number 33 which I've uh, renamed it's always a good idea to rename your files so you've got an idea what's in them just now has uh, three columns in chrome zone start and end now we have to do one last thing and I don't know if I've mentioned this before but files have different um, data types so we click on the pencil icon for our file and click on the data type tab at the top here now this currently says uh, the type is interval and this is what we want however usually when you use cut it will be called tabular and that won't be compatible with our, our tools downstream so you just click on this here you can start typing int and all the options appear and you just click on interval and that's done and save so now we have a file which is ready to be used uh, in our, our downstream tools um, incidentally this format this three line format the sorry three column format is also uh, referred to as a BED file or bed file um, ah, now something else we can do at this stage which is useful uh, for other downstream uh, downstream analyses is we can actually extract the sequence that corresponds to each of these uh, regions, these summit regions so one thing we just need to be sure about and click on the pencil icon again is that we have the right genome set which in our case is mouse mm9 so that's fine that's good now to get the sequence uh, we can use our search tool friend at the top if we type sequence we can see under fetch sequences extract genomic DNA that this is the tool we want to use we select the correct file in this case number 33 there are 200 base pair summit regions uh, don't worry about these too much this, you can just leave these as they are now the kind of generic output type for sequence is a faster file uh, this basically has a um, two lines per sequence one being a header, the second being the sequence itself and press execute um, that will appear as number 34 we can have a look at that so as I said at the top we have a header that starts with a, a pointy right sided bracket and then now a sequence underneath you may notice that these uh, sequences are not all the same as they should be if they were 200 bases um, it appears what I did when I previously run this uh, task is that I selected the wrong file oops mistakes happen so what I will do I will um, I will delete this here and I will rerun it a little bit of live action now so let's get uh, extract genomic DNA select number 33 which is our 200 base pair summit regions and click execute um, now 
this shouldn't actually take very long, uh, so we can do this live. Um, you may have noticed that there was also a set of weeder output at the top here, which I'll discuss in the next section. But I'll rerun that again using the correct data. So let's have a look at this. Now this time, this is what we want. All the sequences are the same 200 base pairs. So I'm just going to rename this. What I tend to do is uh, put the name that Galaxy gives the analysis. So I'll just ex cut that and put it in the info section so I still have what Galaxy called it. And then I'll give it a new name. So Okay, right, so that's all that updated. I'll rerun the other tool at some point. So, the first tool I mentioned is the CIS Element Annotation System, CEAS, which has been developed by the lab that gave us uh, Max and Max2. Uh, the tool's been around for a few years now, but I found it to be one of the uh, simplest and more informative uh, tools for doing this job. Uh, it's actually been, the version that I'm using here has actually been modified by the Sysdrome team to allow it to accept uh, bigwig coverage files, hence it's called CEASBW. Um, the, the tool provides three sets of information describing the relationship of the input binding regions with RefSeq genes for the genome under investigation. Uh, in this case it's using mouse MM9. So the chip region annotation uh, part of the analysis shows the relative enrichment of the binding regions compared to a genomic background for four different categories of gene feature. There's promoters, uh, bidirectional promoters, uh, downstream region of a gene and parts of the gene body itself, so uh, 3 prime and 5 prime UTRs, coding, exons, uh, introns. Uh, there's also a really handy pie chart summary that shows how the binding regions are spread across all those different categories. Uh, and I'll go into more detail with that later. Now the second type of analysis is the gene-centred annotation and this aims to show which genes are being regulated by the bound protein. Uh, CEAS calculates the distance between the centre of the nearest binding region up or downstream of every gene's uh, TSS or transcription start site. And shows how much of the gene body is overlapped by a region. Uh, at this point I should mention that you can enter the full binding region or the short summit region as I have. However it will affect the gene centric annotation that records what proportion of a gene is overlapped by a binding region. Uh, for the other analyses, CEAS appears to only use the midpoint of the regions you provide, so it doesn't matter as long as the midpoint's the same. Uh, I prefer to use the summit region as it, it represents the epicentre of binding activity for transcription factor GYPSEQ uh, sites. Uh, the full length 
of histone chip seek region should be used unless it has a very punctate or uh, peaky looking mark. So the, the final type of analysis is the average signal profiling and this is uh, performed within or near to important genomic features in, in order to avoid missing any subtle binding patterns. Uh, CEAS displays uh, continuous uh, chip enrichment signal within or around important gene features. Um, this allows for example to view increased binding around the TSS. Uh, it also shows binding along what are called metagenes which is where every gene is normalized to the same length so binding can be compared along introns or exons which are usually of course different lengths. Uh, now this is where the bigwig file that is produced by MAX2 comes in. Uh, previously uh, a WIG file was used uh, where every tenth line of that file provided a count for non-redundant extended read fragments every tenth, base, every tenth base of the genome and this could result in a very large file. So the adaption to use a big WIG file instead uh, saves on time and disk space. So let's uh, go back to the galaxy history and see how to run CEAS. Okay, so I'm jumping straight in here to run CEAS using the uh, galaxy tool that was uh, made by our core facility. Um, it was on the previous slide, but I did mention that if you want to search for this on the tool shed, you can look up uh, under PJ Briggs, who who made the uh, made the tool. <coughs> okay, so uh, the main thing is uh, what, what things do we have to put in and what parameters. So. The first, to first file is a bed file of chip regions. Now we, we did this a moment ago, it's the 200 base pair summit regions. Uh, this file here, chromosome start end and 200 bases centered upon the summit. So we, we put that in here. Then we have our the place where we put our big wig file. Now it will still accept a wig file but you're much better off using a big wig file as it will take uh, well it will be a lot smaller um, and max2 will by default output a, uh, a bed graph file which using our max tool is then converted into a uh, bigwig file of the appropriate type. So that goes in here. Uh, bigwig, bigwig, bigwig. Yeah. Um, I'll just reiterate that again actually. So the output of max, you get a bed graph file for the treatment or IP and a bed graph file for the background lambda model but then as I just said you, we additionally auto create a bigwig file for the the IP uh, set of reads principally so it can go directly into uh, CAS that was something I asked for to be included okay carrying on uh, now we can also import another bed file and this is for extra regions of interest so this could include regions of another factor or uh, conserved regions and would allow you to see the overlap between the, the data sets with 
the the bigwig file, the coverage file. So yeah, if you had a transcription factor and then you had which is uh, the primary target for the chip seek, but then you had additional data for a set of other binding regions and you wanted to know how they overlapped or not, you could put those coordinates in here. It's the the same format as the principal file at the top. Okay, so you have to choose the appropriate um, genome. So in this case, mouse MM9. Uh, this it does matter with this what version. So we're using MM9, so you have to select the MM9 gene table. Okay, so for the um, for the gene centered annotation, you need to specify the distance from uh, outside the gene body to the transcription start site or transcription end site. So for example, uh, setting this value to 3000, which is the default, would set a promoter region of 3000 bases before the gene and uh, a gene downstream region of 3000 bases after the gene. Now for the chip region annotation, uh, the promoter region can be kind of fine-tuned so you can set um, a lower region close to the gene body and then a middle region and then an upper region and I usually set these to uh, 500 1000 and 10,000 but it's, it's really up to you and what what kind of analysis you want to do. So by setting 0 to 500 for the kind of close region um, it kind of indicates when binding regions are very close to the gene potentially indicates factors that are involved in the core transcription machinery. And then at the other end of the scale we've got a thousand bases to 10,000 bases so kind of distal region indicates a large span of sequence that is uh, distance, distant to the TSS indicating uh, involvement in a pro distal promoter. So this is all kind of arbitrary but you can only really determine what will suit you by playing around with it. So uh, these three settings also apply uh, to the the downstream region 3 prime of the gene as well so you kind of have to choose something that suits both ends okay then we have uh, we can set lower and upper bounds for bidirectional promoters which is yeah this this one here um, so bi bidirectional promoters are areas between uh, two adjacent and often functionally re related genes coded on opposite strands so with their five prime ends orientated uh, towards one another so again this is I just tend to keep this one um, but just use the default uh, the wig profiling setting can be left uh, untouched and just defines how much of the the input is sampled although I believe uh, this actually isn't used with the big wig file but I could be wrong uh, I have to put a note in the uh, description about that. And then uh, finally the last setting is similar uh, to the option for gene centered annotation 
defining the extent to which coverage profiles are drawn um, before the TSS and after the TTS or transcription termination site. So let's have a look at the output files themselves. So the first um, file that we can have a look at from CEAS is the log output. And again, if we want to look at this in the center screen, we can click on the eye icon. And basically this shows messages from the tool as it ran and contains an R script for generating the main PDF output. So this is quite useful to look at to get a reminder of what um, options you set. Here you can see the different steps of the analysis and then here onwards is the as I said the R output, the statistical package which um, produces all the output that we can see in a minute. Um, the next file we can look at is the PDF report which was created by the R script. Again we'll click on the I to look at that. Okay, it's um forgot it doesn't open up in the center window, it will open up in your favorite PDF viewer. Uh, I'm using Windows 10 to do this so I get this uh, application here which is it's fine for my needs. <coughs> okay so uh, this contains the output of the the three different types of analysis that CES, CEAS performs. Um, let me just maximize this. So this is this is quite detailed, and I could explain every single diagram, but I think you would get a much clearer understanding of uh, each plot and what it means if you read the CEAS manual. It's it's a good manual. It explains everything in in a simple but enough detail. Um, one thing I will just show you is uh, if we keep going down this plot here this is this is the plot I probably use most from CEAS and it is the the area of a gene that each binding region is closest to or overlaps so here you can see that we have three different promoter intervals that we created and um, the downstream regions and then the other parts of the gene body and on the right is actually the distribution as seen in your chip data and on the left is the genome background so we can see here there is a a reasonable um, overabundance of um, binding regions within the promoter region relative to the background. Okay, let's just close this. Now the last um, file that CES produces is the XLS spreadsheet. Um, again this will not... will this open? Okay, so even though it says XLS output it's not actually a binary spreadsheet, it's a type delimited file. However if you save this file um, you can do that with any of these files by clicking on the, the disk icon here when you uh, double click on it in Windows if that's where you're running it that will o automatically open in Excel or whatever program you're using okay so as I said this is um, this is the output of the 
um, I've forgotten the name of it now. This is the output of the gene centered annotation. So you've got all the different um, you've got all the different ways of it has looked at the distribution of genes to binding regions. Um, so it shows the relationship between every gene transcript, which is these NM numbers are IDs from RefSeq, and looks at the relationship to the closest binding region. So at the top is uh, a description of all the relationships between gene and binding region, and each of these corresponds with a column of information. Uh, again, that, I mean, there's not really much to say about this one. It's it's best to be opened in a spreadsheet where you can sort the different columns and discover genes that are within a certain vicinity to uh, binding regions. Now I don't use this output personally I use the uh, next tool I'm going to talk about which is RNA chip integrator which for me um, is a better way of associating um, genes to binding regions but this could work for you So the last tool I'm going to describe is RNA chip integrator which was desi designed to integrate genes from expression analysis gene expression analysis such as RNA-seq or microarrays with chip-seq binding regions. Uh, however it has been designed to be flexible enough to allow the comparison of any genome feature with genome coordinates. So, for example, you could compare CPG islands to chip binding regions, for example. So, in this case, uh, with a chip seq analysis, um, it can be useful to ask which genes are close to each. Uh, of our chip seq regions, but conversely, you can ask which of my chip seq regions are close to each gene in whatever data set you're using. Um, this is similar to the gene centric analysis of CEAS, but allows a different uh, a different gene set to be used and the output is in a format that can be directly added to the detailed max interval spreadsheet. So let's go back to the galaxy history and see how to run RNA chip integrator. Uh, I'd just like to add that apart from being a uh, galaxy tool it is also available to download from GitHub via this URL and is also available from the PyPy Python repository. Um, there's I think quite good a quite good manual to accompany the uh, tool uh, on read the docs if you're uh, interested in it further. Here is the RNA chip integrator panel in Galaxy. Now the uh, genes genomic features tab is uh, particularly important and the file that needs to go in here is tab delimited and it contains the coordinates and strand so a bed file for the genes in the mouse genome. 
Now, uh, CEAS use the RefSeq annotation, uh, which is fine. Uh, it's a good, good uh, gene annotation source, but it does contain all of the transcripts for every gene. Uh, this means when asking what is the closest gene uh, to each binding region you can end up with multiple transcripts of the same gene rather than multiple genes which is probably of more interest. Uh, for human and mouse analyses I use the canonical gene sets from UCSC. Uh, canonical genes provide a single gene model per gene that is constructed by clustering the constituent transcripts together, typically including the the most overrepresented exons from all the transcripts. Um, for other genomes where the canonical sets are not available, uh, RefSeq genes are fine, at least to get you going. Uh, for other purposes, you can also include uh, an additional column that indicates whether a gene is expressed or identifies some other feature that allows you to uh, filter on in the analysis. Uh, so I should just say that below the um, parameter entry points, there's also a description of the input files here below. Um, the peak file here contains the coordinate. Well, what you need to enter is the coordinates of the binding region. So, in this case, 200 base pair summit regions that I extracted earlier. Now. The maximum distance between gene and peak is uh, is large. In this case, I've got a million. Um, in human and mouse genomes, there can be areas of the devoid of genes called gene deserts. So, if your binding region is in one of these it might be a considerable distance to the next gene so I like to keep this this distance parameter large um, because in the output you can also you, you can sort by the distance between a binding region and a gene later on okay so the next one is um, so I've mentioned before that uh, that I like to report the two closest genes um, to each binding region, but you could choose to. Well, it's, um, sorry, by default it's set to four, but I like to have the two closest um, genes per binding region. Um, you could set this to just the closest, so set it to one, or you can increase the the number to much to a much large number. Um, but it's up to your analysis. Uh, now here we have uh, a definition of the promoter because. Uh, the output file will indicate whether uh, a binding region overlaps with a gene body or promoter. And the promoter can be set manually as you can see here. It depends on the genome but generally I set the promoter to being uh, minus uh, 1kb upstream of the annotated transcription start site and 100 bases into the first um, uh, exon of the gene. Now, uh, depending on the chipped protein, it may be of interest to, inch, uh, to measure the distance between the closest edge of a peak 
and the TSS uh, but in some other cases you may wish to get the closest gene um, measured to either the TSS or the transcription uh, termina termination site or termination end site sorry transcription end site um, so if you have prior knowledge that the factor binds to a promoter then it would be best to set the distance um, to just reference the TSS only uh, if you're looking for a transcription factor that could be present in enhancer regions for example they might be located but as equally likely to the 5 prime end of a gene or the 3 prime end of a gene, a gene. so you just set this option here um, so if the gene file that I was talking about at the start contains the additional flag that means it has some special condition like it's expressed or something else then you'd set this to yes and it would just consider um, genes that have that property uh, this is useful if say you're comparing uh, chip uh, binding regions against a RNA-seq analysis and you just want to compare uh, differentially express expressed genes the compact output format uh, is useful when, as in our case, the results will be used to annotate the uh, max interval file. The compact mode will concatenate um, each of the closest genes onto the same line. So if we selected to collect the two closest genes, then those two um, genes would be put on the same line as the binding region uh, otherwise if you set this to no uh, each um, binding region, region and gene pair would take up its own line RNA chip integrator provides three output files uh, the there is an Excel spreadsheet which actually is a, a binary spreadsheet in XLSX format and uh, it's a combination of um, both flavors of the RNA chip integrator analysis uh, so it combines the two other files in the spreadsheet uh, along with useful information about what parameters you used etc um, so the two separate analyses is the nearest peaks to each gene analysis but then there's also the nearest genes to each peak analysis so if we just have a look at the nearest peaks to each gene you can see that down the edge are all the different genes in the data set in the canonical data set in this case and then the um, coordinates for the binding region however we look if we look at nearest genes to each peak then down the side is the uh, binding region and then information about the uh, closest gene or gene so in this case we use the compact version so we have at the start here we have gene ID 1, 11111 and then gene ID 2 and then corresponding information so we have information about um, the distance of the closest gene to the uh, TSS or if it was set the TSS or TES and then specific details and the distance to the TES of the gene distance to the sorry distance to the TSS of the gene 
distance to the TES of the gene, whether the binding region is up or downstream of the gene, and uh, whether the binding region overlaps the body of the gene or whether it is within the de defined oops, defined promoter. So this is the file that you can save, copy and paste into the detailed uh, max2 interval output. And then what you'll then have is a spreadsheet that has all the statistical results for each binding region, but also uh, a quick look at what the closest genes are, and, and this can be sorted within the uh, spreadsheet. Um, if you're interested in RNA chip integrator, I would recommend that you looked at uh, you look at the read the docs uh, manual, as I'm sure it will give uh, a lot more clearer description of all the functionality than I'm giving. So to conclude, uh, CEAS gives us a visual report that is particularly useful in providing information about where binding, binding events occur relative to genes. RNA chip integrator provides a file that can be directly pasted into the MAX2 results spreadsheet, giving, giving an immediate idea of the genes that are potentially regulated by uh, the protein of interest. So that concludes part five of my ChipSeq tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching and goodbye.